Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today on Collection Lessons, I want to talk about recurring cost. Reoccurring cost. It's part of my Collection Lessons series. Anything I say on this channel, anything let's get going. So I want to talk about recurring cost because um, I'm not talking about the accounting term or analogy or the line item or whatever in accounting. I'm talking about when you get something or when you pay for something, make sure or look for a reoccurring cost. Because the thing is, is like, people are smart, businesses are smart, companies are smart, and they will somehow try to figure out a way to get you to finance them somehow with a reoccurring cost. So like, you know, back in the day, when we used to buy these things, they were called discs. It was a CD, right? And you put this in your CD player and you buy this and it'd be like $15 and it'd be like a I don't know, Lil Wayne DVD or CD that I remember I had. And uh, you put it in, you listen to music. You li probably listen to it for like, I think I listened to that album for like at least one to two years, right? So that $15 got me a long way. So this was back before Bluetooth and stuff was a thing. And um, and the aux cord and stuff, right? Before that, it was like cassette tapes, if you even know what a cassette tape is, or before that nature. Anyway, um, so like you'd pay this one-time fee and you get the disc, you can play it for as long as you want, as much as you want, for ever, forever. Fifteen dollars, and you got to play music forever. Music forever, forever. We're gonna call it forever. You know, this is where like the the music industry and stuff they they did something kind of right, um, because if you couldn't find the D the CD or whatever, or if you want to make your own CD, people would download music for free and everybody would be missing out the profits, right? Some people think that's stealing. In my opinion, stealing is when I take something from you and you no longer have it. Um, you know, the, it's like, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, download a car. Like, remember those types of ads, right? The thing is, is if I could download the car, copy and paste it, and we physically don't have a difference and we both get to drive the same car, that's not stealing from you, right? That's just the original owner of the vehicle or the one that originally sold it doesn't get the profits, which is not the greatest thing, right? That's what music kind of had had going with it, right? With all the digital music, with Bear Share and all the, you know, piracy things back in the day, Kazaa and everything, right? And YouTube. And the thing is, like, you know, the music industry had to change and figure something out or they're going to run into problems is what they kind of found. So they started doing some streaming stuff, which back in the day, the network, the bandwidth couldn't handle that. But eventually technology went on and then you had things like Spotify, right? And you have things like YouTube music. We'll just call it YouTube music. You have, you know, I think Apple has maybe a subscription model as well. But the thing is, is like, $15 for like, I don't know, I think back in the day it was like 12 songs or something or anything like that. So like, you know, if you wanted 100 songs, you'd probably have to spend at least $100, $150, right? <clears throat> Which all went to the artists. That was the best thing, right? It went to the people or somehow floated away its way, the money back to the original people. You know, the Spotify, the YouTube, Apple, those types of things, the subscription model. And this is just a music example. They said, well, people want the music. They don't want viruses, which is a bad thing, right? They don't want this. They don't want to download stuff. They would like to support the original artists if they could, because people still have like compassion for original artists. They like their people, that type of thing. So these people created a subscription. And what is the subscription? The subscription is a reoccurring cost. You don't, no longer can you like, I think maybe on some, you know, some music platforms, you can download just one DVD for like X amount of dollars and you have it forever, maybe. Even if you own it, maybe. Maybe you just own the license to it and they can take it off the store whenever they want it. But like $15, maybe $100, and you'd have things and you could last forever, right? I mean, sure, new things come along, whatever, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, I want to listen to my 1980s music. I want to listen to my Backstreet Boys, right? Like stuff like that. And um, so, you know, Spotify, I think it's like $15 or something like that. We'll just say it's $15 for this video. Every single month. Ding, 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 every month. So now what are you paying for a year? Over 150 bucks, right? 15 times 12 is, quick math, 180, right? And and if you don't use it, 
it still costs you money. This is the reoccurring cost I'm talking about, right? You don't just pay a one-time fee of Spotify and you get it for every, you pay every single month and it nickels and dimes you and all of a sudden you're spending over 150, 180 uh, a year, no matter what. And that's the thing is it, it slowly trickles away. You're like, oh, it's $15 and it's there when I need it. But like you never use it or you use it for like five hours or something like that a month. It's just not worth it, right? But they made the model so that you basically, and like I say before, a subscription is just financing without an end date. You basically get nickel and dime with a reoccurring cost. This is one example. This is where the company benefits off of you, right? Um, companies will also, this is just one example. Companies will also do this in other forms and businesses know this and companies know this. People like, like when you go to work and you remember the work environment back in my old job, You'd have like treat days, you'd have pizza days, you'd have um, what's staff appreciation days, that type of thing, right? And the thing is, is like they spend, I don't know, like um, maybe like $1,000. They spend $1,000 and that covers enough pizza for, let's say, um, 100 employees. And all the employees would get together, they'd laugh, they'd cheer, be like, oh yeah, I'm not working, I'm sitting on the break room eating some free pizza. That's the other thing, they'll call it free pizza. And it's like, do you not understand what just happened? And most employees won't because most 90% of employees are just stuck in the employee mindset. You know, if, if you would have broken this down, if you would have given everybody just like a dollar raise, 50 cents raise, I'm sure that they would be more appreciative over the length of time, over years, over years, over months, over years, for weeks, for months. You know, like they would be so much more happier than the one-time thing of pizza. The, the business will benefit, called the B, the business would rather give a thousand dollars tax write-off of that without the reoccurring cost of 50 cents per hour per employee. Like if they would have invested, this is hour per employee, like if they would have invested in their employees more, if they would have given money more, because I can't call up the bank and be like, hey bank, I got a pizza today. I can give you pizza if you can just pay my bill for me. It's like the bank doesn't take pizza for bills. You know, like I can't I can't do anything with this other than, oh, maybe I'll save the $5 of my lunch break. It's like saving money isn't making money. I'd rather have the money, but they don't give dividends out because they don't like it goes in the wrong direction. This is somebody taking money from you in dividend form um, I call it type two dividends, kind of like type two something else. But like, you know, I, if you recognize what they're doing, they're nickeling and diming because it's called, it's kind of like a dividend in a sense. It's like, it's like when you invest in a, in a REIT or if you invest in something and you get dividends every three to six months, right? A dividend is when you get paid out, right? Well, these companies will nickel and dime you to get paid monthly, right? They will prevent this from happening where it goes the other way. These companies aren't going to give the money back every month, right? They might give you some credits or they might give you some free Ponzi points or something like that to keep you as a customer because you'll forget about it. You'll feel happy and then you'll do it again and they'll get more dividends from it. That's the whole point of the dividends, the recurring cost. So the business would rather have the tax rate off. Use your raise to buy the tax rate off pizza instead of giving the raise to you like it should. So there's a reoccurring cost that they're avoiding here. Whereas the first you know, situation was a recurring cost of taking money from you. This is not taking money from you. It's not giving you any, right? The other things like, you know, music was one example. Obviously you could apply this to Netflix. You can apply this to, you know, Amazon Prime, right? Like it's got some music, it's got some, we'll call it, and this is the other thing, we'll call it free shipping. It's like, I, I literally have not paid shipping on Amazon stuff without Amazon Prime for like three years now, like three years. Like all you got to do, like if you just look on Amazon, if you don't have Prime, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, you'll have options and it'll be like, oh, two day shipping and it'll be like free with Amazon Prime, right? Or it'll be like the, you know, three days shipping for zero dollars. But the problem that Amazon does is they immediately, if you don't have Amazon Prime, they'll say 50 bucks and they'll say in three days. 
And you're like, well, what the frick? Why would I pay $50 in three days when they get the $0 in three days without Amazon Prime? Is it free shipping? It's not. They just label it as that, right? Like, yeah, you get two-day free shipping, but it's not free shipping. You pay a monthly or yearly subscription, and if you don't pay it, it gets taken away from you. They have a reoccurring cost fee, right? It's the same as, um, like, like I, I personally have a PlayStation 5, so I have a PlayStation Plus, right? And that's like a yearly subscription model. If I get, like, you get games every month on this PlayStation model, similar to, like, Xbox, I think, has their Game Pass type thing, where it's, like, X amount of dollars, and you get access to all these games worth thousands of dollars or some junk. But, like, you don't own anything. It's like, you go in for the experience for your video games. You don't own it. If you don't pay your subscription model, if you don't pay the financing fee of subscribing to them, you get it taken away from you. So would you say that it's a free game? You know, if like like PlayStation, for example, adds, I don't know, two to three games, and they they no longer, if you look for it, they no longer, I don't think any way that I can tell, say that it's free. They say now it's included. And if you look, they're just it's tricky on the wording. Some places might say, like, Amazon still is in the free thing, but I think everybody's kind of changing towards included now. So it's like, if all you do, let's say, is play, I don't know, play one video game a month, um, every month, we'll call it every month, you know, and you want to play online, and online, I don't know, it's 120, I'm not sure, I get PlayStation Plus um, subscriptions um for birthday presents and stuff usually i haven't paid for one for like two or three years now and they just add on to the last one or something like that i don't know but anyway you pay 120 dollars to play online one game a month and then they say that you get free games and it's like they're not free you paid 120 dollars you probably didn't even have to play online you just paid it so you can get the games you can play them but you give them back when you just cancel this you just finance the games like can you imagine back in the day this is where like what happened to like Blockbuster back in the day even with Netflix. Let's just let's just break this down. You used to buy a game. It was $60. Okay? You take it home, you play it for as long as you want. Exactly the same as this forever. You can play that $60 game forever. I have my old like I I'm, I'm making a Nintendo collection. I have an NES, SNES, N64, GameCube. I have all that and I have old games. They aren't my original consoles when I bought them, but I've been hunting them in the summer just for fun. I can play them forever. There's a 1989 Super Mario Brothers, right? Like, that's still around. That $60 game, play, play forever. If I would have paid $5 a month from that point in 1989 to now, can you imagine how many thousands of dollars that might be right now? For the $60 game, the one game? Like, it doesn't make sense. So, like, you know, it's, it's crazy when you think of it like that. Like, so Blockbuster and video games back in the day, you'd buy physical copies. Here's the problem that happened with them, similar to the music artists up here. With a video game, okay, so like the person that makes the video game, like the publishers and developers, they make the video game, they sell it to like a reseller or like a EB Games, GameStop, Blockbuster, back in the day I remember you could buy video games from Blockbuster, uh, Best Buy, right? So the video game makers, they make all that stuff, eventually it comes to the point where they do the last handoff, it's called. And the last handoff, Best Buy, we'll call them back here, Best Buy, and then here's like the supplier of some sorts, right? They give it to them, they charge them. I think it's like, I don't know, three to five percent. And then Best Buy sells it to you. We'll just put a you. And they make another like one to, I think it's one to five percent. They don't make hardly anything. Best Buy hardly makes anything off of you for this video game. Like it's it's more publicity than anything. You get this game, your money, you know, your $60, we'll say, now they're like 90 or something, but we'll go with 60 because that's what I remember back when they used to be in these games. Your $60 flows back through all the way back to the developer in some fashion, right? If nobody buys a game, the developer doesn't really get paid. They kind of take that risk, kind of like a movie. Here's the thing. From this point, it breaks the connection. It breaks the connection back to the developer. That's the problem that they had, the video games and the movie industry. It breaks the connection because I take this $60 game, I enjoy it, I love it, now I'm done with it. Now what do I do? Now I sell it. It's usually, in a normal market, you'll sell it for less than you paid for it. That's just how used games work. Similar to used games, similar to like rare Pokemon cards, rare rare um, vehicles like antique cars and stuff, right? They go down in price, 
until they hit a bottom and then they become rare and then they start getting back more up in price. And the reason they do that is because, you know, Pokemon cards get ripped or out of circulation or cars just naturally die because they either die physically or they get smashed into and they crash and written off and then they get put turned into scrap. So they get more rare, which then brings up that, you know, value of it because now something that's more rare is going to be worth more. I think we know that with like, you know, crypto or any minerals, gold, or even, you know, the inflation that's happening now is more money's printed, therefore money is worth less value. It can buy less things. That's It's not as tangible as it used to be, right? Anyway, you break this chain. Now when I sell it, I sell it for $45, let's say, this video game. $45 goes in my pocket. Technically, if you want to claim it as a loss, I lost $15. However, I had that enjoyment. It's an entertainment thing usually for video games. The thing is, this $15 comes to me, it doesn't go back all the way. And that's the problem that developers have. So video game companies, similar to Netflix and, and Best Buy, Best Buy was like, oh, we'll rent it forever and it'd be great because we can make the same amount of dollars on X amount of games, whatever. But on video games, that broke that connection. Developers weren't getting paid. They'd sell one game that one person would sell it to 10 people below them. And the developers would lose that 10 extra dollars, that $600, $600 right? They would make 60, they wouldn't make 600 if this game traveled through 10 people. Hope that makes sense. I'm doing lots of math, it's getting scribbly. So the thing that they created was digital sales. PlayStation, uh, Nintendo, Microsoft, even PC games like Steam, they will, you know, you'll buy a game for 60, maybe even 30, they'll sell it at a discount. You know why? Because you can't transfer it. You don't actually own it. You own a license fee. So when you're like, oh, I played this game, you know, that I bought, I bought Sniper Elite 5, for example. Love it. It's fun. Play it on my PlayStation. It was 55 bucks or five bu 50 bucks or something like that. When I'm done with it, I can't get that money back. When I'm done with it, I can't give it to somebody else. If somebody else wants to play it, they have to either purchase it digitally like I did, which then the money goes back to the developers, or they're going to have to find a used copy if there's still a disc copy and if they have a disc PS5, right? That's a reoccurring cost. Back to the original talk about all this. That's a reoccurring cost. They're looking for reoccurring costs. They're looking for those game pass things. They're looking for PlayStation Plus. They're looking for digital sales because you can't sell it back to the people. Just recognize what a reoccurring cost is, a recurring cost is, because it'll just eat you alive. These things will eat you alive. I don't know. Like, I have zero subscriptions to these. I have zero Amazon Prime, Spotify, YouTube. Apple. I don't even have an Apple product, really. But, like, stuff like that. Buy stuff you want and you can keep. Hopefully that you can either sell if you need to or have, give that experience back to whoever, right? Um, that's kind of the best thing that you can kind of do, is avoid the reoccurring cost. And recognize when your business, when your, you know, workplace is avoiding it as just the same, right? So, hope you guys are doing well. It's a long video. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks and talk soon.